Hi, I'm Tom McCrudden. and I'm the president of Research Aquaculture and Premier Shellfish. We are a clam and oyster hatchery, nursery grow-out, and wholesale distribution company which distributes clams and oysters uh, throughout Florida. We are located here at my hatchery facility where we grow the larvae, baby clams and oysters for resale and planning over on our West Coast operations to grow the uh, product up to full size. Uh, the reason I'm here today is to talk about the effects of the Lake Okeechobee discharges by the South Florida Water Management District uh, effects on my business, my industry, and uh, living. Uh, essentially what's happening is the discharges are dropping salinity levels on the East Coast from the uh, St. Lucie River uh, location where our salinity levels are so low that it's killing off the oyster beds and our uh, nursery operations are unsustainable. Uh, we, we cannot run on the East Coast uh, since the rains and the discharges have continued to uh, be released. Uh, the effects on our West Coast operations over in Pine Island Sound, which is from the Caloosahatchee discharges, uh, we've had a spike in the red tide. Essentially, within 10 to 14 days, like clockwork, whenever they open the locks and let the water loose over on the West Coast, uh, you can set your clock to the fact that we will have red tide over there, and this is a very severe bloom we have over there right now. Uh, what's happening is our clams and oysters are essentially we cannot harvest and operate the way we would like to because the red tide it doesn't kill the clams but we cannot harvest it due to potential sickness uh, to people, to humans. So um, we are unable to operate and, and run our business effectively the way uh, we would like to. So. These discharges are absolutely destroying our industry and our business, and we would like to try to voice our, our, get our voice out to be heard to stop the discharges as soon as possible. We've got about 30 million clams swimming in uh, these different larvae tanks right now that we just spawned a few days ago, and uh, you can't really see them. They're about 68 micron size right now, which is a little bigger than a dust particle floating in the air. So. Uh, in this tank here, there's at least 10, 15 million clams right now uh, swimming around, and we have to change the water every day uh, to keep the bacteria levels down and, and keep the clams nice and healthy. In this tank here, we've got uh, about a million or so of the Sunray Venus clams, where this is, you know, close to 100,000 clams in that this bin right here. You can see the looks like sand. It's uh, These are about two week old Sunray Venus clams. These are the Sunray Venus here. They're called Sunray Venus? Yeah. They're beautiful. The shells turn pink when you cook them. It's a beautiful shell. You know, and these things are just phenomenal. Uh, we're the only commercial operation in the world producing this right now. We try to have these nice traits on them, these uh, Indian designs. It's a pretty clam there. We're here in our algae lab where we grow the algae for the clams and oysters and uh, trying to figure out the reason why when Boat Marine has done their uh, research study which was funded uh, back in 2006 that we never conclusively determined any root causes. Uh, I know the Sierra Club had criticized the report on you know, tracking and mitigating the blooms, but never trying to identify core sources and reasons for the algae blooms. What is the reason that we're having these issues? Uh, as you can see, we can grow algae. We can you know figure out how to do it in the in the lab. Uh, with enough money and the right uh, un unsubjective agency in charge, maybe we can try to figure out why are we having these red tide blooms and having the effect on, on industries like ours in the state and around the world, uh, for that matter. I know in Korea and, and all around the world they have uh, the red tide issues as well. So we uh, like to try to find out the cause of uh, conclusively we have there, there's research 
back in 96, uh, done by University of Miami and Harvard Branch, uh, a couple scientists there, who concluded that there is strong evidence uh, linking the discharges to the red tide events. Um, you know, maybe it would be nice to get some grant money in the hands of an unbiased agency that can do some research and try to figure out, you know, you know what, what is causing these red tide events and uh, see if we can get some real answers uh, to the people. So, appreciate you listening to me. Thank you.